अरे मैं एक वेबिनार में हूँ भाई कह रही कि भी मैं वेबिनार में हूँ मैं वेबिनार में हूँ गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर आई थिंक आई वॉज ऑन न्यूट कैन यू हेयर मी नाउ या Uh, good evening, sir. I am ABM Saxena, and it was very heartening to see that you were vice chancellor of DIAT. I have done a tenure there as head of faculty. Air. Oh, long back. Long back, sir. It was during I was a group captain at the time, two thousand four to two thousand seven. Okay, I I joined there in two thousand fifteen and left two thousand eighteen. I okay. think you must have had enough opportunity because uh, they had the wind tunnels and infra good infrastructure, and I added I added hyper wind, uh, you know, uh, hyper speed uh, wind tunnel there, and yes, got, and got the other two wind tunnels repaired. Acha, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, it is the only institute in the country which has got the uh, four types of uh, wind tunnels. I don't know whether they are using or not. That's a different thing. But uh, mm. since Dr. Christopher was very really known to me, and uh, funds were available, so I got all the things done there. Whether they use oh, or thanks. not is a different thing. <laughs> I got no idea. Even I have, even I haven't gone there after 2007, yeah. so it would be difficult. But in my time, this transition took place yeah. from DIAT to the uni. From IIT, IIT to DIIT, IITs. you knew uh, 2006 actually. Our first VC was uh, Professor Ramachandra Rao Sam. Yes, a very, very, very learned person. Very eminent person, hmm. metallurgist. Very eminent. Yes. I had a discussions with him long back. You know when I had no idea about DIIT. So okay, okay. Uh, He told that a uh, lot of things can be done, but uh, his hands were tied. I don't know what he meant. But uh, I find this is a good infrastructure. A lot of things can be for uh, done for the defense. Oh, you are starting a defense university, na? And that uh, Hindu, I don't know what, what is the status of that one. But this uh, thing itself can be upgraded, and you have got all the infrastructure. That's true. You very good infrastructure. I established contracts with the NDA plus uh, in the Indian Naval Defence Academy, and I got a lot of things from Air Force also because you know Air Chief Sharma at that time he was Vice Chief. He was known to me. Okay. He sir. has got a lot of interest in navigation, na? satellite navigation. Huh. And I am the founder and he... program director of Navik and Gagan. Navik, okay. Navik and Gagan both. It's a very, very important project, sir. <laughs> very important. So we took a lot of input from your report at that time. Hello. Yeah, I'm already there. I, I, I'm talking to uh, Air Marshal Sachin and others. Yeah. Dr. Sarupan, your presentation was excellent and very knowledgeable. I think you have done a lot of, I uh, mean, uh, put a lot of efforts in making the presentation. Uh, actually, sir, we do a lot of work in uh, our fact, uh, our place in Noida. So these were actual examples which we have been doing in the defense. See, you talked about the CD, you know, PCB along with the antennas, etc. 
Yes. I think sometimes uh, we can have a discussion. Surely, I see that my, you are a communication man. Also, when I was in ISRO, working on hardware, and uh, okay. see, I always say that uh, we should think out of box. If Steve Jobs would have not thought out of box, we would have not had a mobile, which is which does not follow the, any theory given in the book. Correct. It does not follow the uh, Panthers uh, communication book. It does not follow cross antenna. It does not follow anything. So we have to think out of box, so, and I think you are thinking out so, of box. So when we created this terrain map, sir. for the uh, army uh, for the planning typically the uh, the plan which is made with mud and is very approximate in this case they could actually measure uh, from the top to top and they were accurate even 200 meters see if you are if you are using the gis tools and uh, If you take the inputs from Gagan or Navi, you know, see, you must have taken the inputs from or three D model of Bhuvan, which is made by NRF. We use the Cartosat data, sir. Yeah. Basically, we use the Cartosat data and superimposed it ah, on so the server. So Cartosat data is a very accurate. We get an accuracy. Actually, declared accuracy is two meters, but we get uh, almost a uh, uh, half a meter accuracy. Point five, point six three meters. Yeah, half a meter, you know, in most of the cases. Yeah. so we worked on that map and then superimposed it on the uh, survey of india map yeah. to get uh, a relative picture so it was a colored satellite image which was used to create the terrain so you could actually get the all the trees and the water bodies and the uh, aspect ratios and the slope and everything Yeah, and in communication, I think we are coming up with the first center at uh, BHU. Hmm. Uh, they are planning to procure this machine, which can manufacture the PCB and the uh, radar. Uh, this uh, antennas. What I suggest is, you can take my details from uh, Dr. Shibu John mobile and email. And sometimes when this uh, omic run thing is over. Then maybe I can come down to Delhi, or I come to Delhi very, very often, so we can meet sometime. Most probably, uh, yeah, those are those are my fields, you know, and I'm still yes. pursuing. So we have <coughs> also developed a conductive ink. So with the so we worked on both graphene as well as on conductive ink. So with the graphene and the conductive ink. we can even print it on the standard base material but if you put the nano uh, copper or silver or gold whichever is uh, cheaper in that one the, the antenna radiation efficiency will improve because the lo copper losses will be less yes so you can do in any of these materials so that's not a problem see in all the pcbs the circuit had to be made where the circuit to circuit connection the layer to layer connection was always done with the help of uh, the holes i think we But can discuss this, it later on because uh, yeah no wing commander the panel members are here yeah. is dr shibu joining in Yeah, so I am there, but uh, uh, it, the the control is with you, sir. Uh, session chair and the moderator is uh, uh, Colonel Co K V Kubeer, sir. So please, sir, you can continue. We can start. So uh, people are all connected. We have uh, say close to uh, uh, some eighty six of them, and we are going. We will go live stream eventually uh, to a very large database also. So thank yes. you so much, gentlemen, uh, for this panel discussion, and let me take this opportunity to introduce you to. Uh, Wing Commander Raman Surupi, who is the founder president of ADCI, that is the Aerospace uh, Defence Consultants Association of India, uh, and following him is uh, Colonel K V Kubeer, uh, who is uh, one of the key respondents in Aerospace and Defence, also the advisor for Aeros Aerospace and Defence in ENY. Thank you so much, both of you, sir, for your presence and participation for the panel discussion, and other key respondents and gentlemen. 
uh, 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 and stalwarts, I would say, who are who are also our telegraphy advisory members, Dr. Surinder Palji. Thank you so much, sir, for your presence. You, you were also present in the morning, and your expertise is really of great importance. Um, and uh, also an ex uh, 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 vice Ch chancellor with DI. AT, uh, Defense Institute of Advanced Technology, sir, we will need a lot of inputs coming from you because I think the growing, uh, the aspirants need to know in terms of how the educational institutions can also have this as a curriculum. Throughout the day, I think we had a great session to understand and learn. And I think Christ, uh, Dr. Christ Paul will also be able to fill in that gap because he's also a training expert, uh, done a lot of curriculums uh, 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 in this area, and uh, uh, he will also share his insights. and. Uh, uh, Air Marshal, uh, Vice Marshal uh, S. Saxena, sir, thank you so much for your presence and your perspectives on 3D printing and a great learning from you will also be of great importance. Uh, Sarup Chand, who has actually been uh, a key respondent in, uh, in 3D printing, sir, for almost last two decades, uh, a very humble and a very uh, 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 modest person. It was always uh, uh, an opportunity to connect with him and learn from him eventually from all the events that we've done in the past. We've been doing back-to-back uh, -back sessions on medical and dental. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but now with engineering, with aerospace, defense, and then following that would be uh, the maritime and shipping industry, automobile tooling. I think there's a lot to offer uh, uh, what 3D technology can do. Mass customization is going to be the next big future, sir. I mean, we all spoke about this, but we understand it's not only in prototyping, but this is beyond prototyping. I think there's a lot of spoko, but I think there has to be a policy-driven initiative uh, uh, where we, we can all work together, sir, in one house working in confluence together. Thank you so much for your time. Sir, over to you, sir. Uh, uh, Wing Commander Raman Surupiji, please. Thank you, uh, Shibu. Uh, thanks to all my panelists. Uh, each one of you is uh, going to be working as a co-chair along with me. So it is by accident that I am uh, happen to be the, sitting in the chair session. Uh, incidentally, AVM Saxena and myself both have been students at uh, Pune which is now the DIAT also. So uh, what I was thinking that uh, since morning we have been to this business, this is the third such event we are doing. We had first event with Indo-Pacific with Government of Australian events. Then we had another session global during the last Aero India with uh, Dr. Shibu John. And this is most India specific. Unfortunately, the global time where we are, uh, I'm sure next time when we have an event, it could be probably a physical event either in uh, Bangalore or in Delhi, uh, where we would like to have an evening cocktail party over the panel discussion also. So, uh, Colonel Kuber, what are the rules of the game? You are the moderator. How much time? So, we've got about uh, 30 minutes to go. And so probably, uh, I think uh, what we can do is uh, we can start off with uh, a fundamental question that I would like to ask. Please. and see how our uh, panelists are going to respond to this. <clears throat> Throughout the day, we've been hearing a lot of good things about uh, 3D printing. And um, the news seems to be good. The uh, industry seems to be excited. I wanted to ask a very fundamental question. <clears throat> My understanding of 3D printing is <clears throat> it may be cost effective when the numbers and volumes of production are low. The moment we go into large numbers and uh, large scale production, 3D printing is not going to be cost effective and therefore is not going to be the sustainer in terms of the industry at large. So let's start with uh, Dr. Crest Paul and then uh, let's hear uh, Dr. Sarup Chand and then the Air Vice Marshal <clears throat> before I turn on to Dr. Surinder Pal. Yeah, uh, thank you, Colonel Kumar. Uh, really, it's true that uh, things will be uh, very attractive when we talk of the low volume manufacturing. Uh, but another thing that we need to search upon and look into that today the world is going towards mass customization. You know, so that mass customization is the word that is going to change. And another aspect that I see is uh, when we talk of the, you know, product, we are likely to see a product with more complexities, with, uh, you know, with um, uh, embedded uh, sensors inside, and we want to have it different, which is 
very difficult to make by conventional processing. So you cannot have a you know, sensor embedded uh, components or you can have a very complex profile made. And, and it, many times, uh, you know, uh, our conventional methods were limiting the thought process. And when we see, see, that's what I always say in my training session, that when we talk of additive manufacturing, first thing we need to unlearn the conventional manufacturing. You know, the the shadow of the conventional manufacturing should not fall on our thought process. And we should start thinking right away from the beginning. So if you see all these parameters, I'm optimistic that uh, definitely there is a larger role uh, for additive manufacturing to play. Though, um, even if the, even if the, um, uh, volumes are uh, uh, of mid range or maybe you know uh, n- not very large thank you uh, i think you 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 thrown about a very wonderful uh, angle to it in terms of mass customization uh, uh, dr sarup chand uh, yours your views. Uh, sir i i i substantiate what dr paul said <clears throat> there is a lot of mass customization uh, Fundamentally, there are certain industries where the production itself is always mass customization. To take an example, jewelry, dental, uh, uh, examples of uh, earplugs, or many of the medical applications are always mass customization. The second aspect, in terms of mass production, there are certain industries like EV and uh, 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 drones which cannot be manufactured with the conventional technology because of the light weighting which is required. So there, in, we have seen that there are three large drone manufacturers which get as much as 10,000 parts being produced every year of different types. So for one of the drone manufacturers we produce nearly 1 lakh parts uh, uh, which is typically they don't do any mass production in any other manner because they could not do it. The third aspect which uh, we have uh, seen in the industry with the design for additive manufacturing, uh, you are able to reduce the cost of production by 3D printing because in every other technology, more material you remove, the higher the cost of manufacturing. In 3D printing, if at the design level, if you can remove more material because geometry is a bonus in 3D printing, the lesser is the time to produce and lesser is the cost incurred in 3D printing. So with DFM, it is very, very possible and we have seen it in a couple of examples where the in company or the industry has actually gone mass production. That's a very good angle. So you really talked about, uh, you know, industries like jewelry, dental and all that. But then, you know, <coughs> let me ask the Air Vice Marshal, you know, he is the advisor with the Munitions India Limited. Let's focus on the munitions and then uh, let's see as to uh, what are the chances that uh, Munitions India Limited will adopt to 3D printing in the next, say, three to five years. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Colonel, you have asked a very pertinent question. Before I go to MIL, I will just say that uh, till yesterday when I was the user, when I was in Indian Air Force, most of the time we used to get stuck with the uh, you know problem of MOQ, minimum order quantities, because we have such a varied, variety of uh, fleets, variety of items, variety of engines, where whenever we are mostly the OEMs have stopped manufacturing things, and nobody wants to invest infrastructure into that because our quantities were so low and we are not we were not getting it at any cost from abroad so in such situations i think 3d printing is really going to be a very very beneficial solution to us mm-hmm. to, even today i am uh, from ordnance factories also i am facing the issues like this chairman ofb was there in, in the morning that uh, there are certain fleets which we are supporting with various metal components, but they are not so big that we set up uh, huge infrastructures for them. So that is one part. In certain areas where we always get stuck uh, for MOQs, 3D printing is really, I wish if it was there uh, 20 years before, it was there somewhere in world, but uh, of course not even, in fact, 
what today the, i have seen the proceeding since morning i am surprised i think last the seminar we had in february since february itself we have moved a long way further in fact the amount of response which we have from industry today is fantastic and they tell it 14 billion dollars is the market share and all that now coming to mil yes mil uh, which is largely supporting armament ammunition and explosives mainly from army our main customer is army they are actually uh, most of them are very big size assemblies where 3d printing will take lot of time as of now ordnance factories from side they have started in some electronic items you know we have got a few electronics factories uh, with us which is now change into a dpsc for optel india limited there we are having a usage of this but for munition india limited per se the whole purpose of making it a dpsu is to expand our horizon and uh, what i have seen large number of uh, you know private uh, vendors private firms coming forward with their ideas we are open to it we are definitely open to it wherever it is possible so it, if you ask me to quantify as of now it will be difficult but i am telling you again that for low moqs it is a very good solution if i talk of our indian air force so so therefore uh, airbus marshal what i really understand from you is that uh, one is the large size of the components and second is um, munitions india will normally deal in numbers you're going to talk about uh, you know a million cartridges you know you're going to talk about in terms of thousands of bombs and like that and therefore probably what i understand from your answer is 3d printing is not so easily suitable mm, is that a yes or a no for munitions india limited yes yes okay thank yes. you yes. now i'll turn to dr surender pal and ask this question so you've been an academician you've been at the helm of uh, you know the diat and here we are having a very typical problem you see when i asked dr sarup chand he shifted to uh, industries like jewelry and others uh, dr chris paul came directly to the point and said uh, you know uh, there are issues in terms of uh, uh, the uh, in terms of uh, numbers and repetitive manufacturing now i would like to ask you sir support supposing like you you been a person who's been thinking out of the box and you also talked about it a little while ago so if we were to sort of bring a mix and match of 3d printing and uh, conventional uh, manufacturing how will that look like is it a good idea or uh, should we think of something else well in the pre- uh, thank you colonel saab um, first of all i mean uh, can i speak uh, two sentences for uh, wing commander raman See, you showed uh, during the presentation. I was present in most of the presentations. Uh, you showed concern about the education. Okay, so whenever you do, you, I, I am there to give you the inputs about the education. Second Thank thing you. is the presentations were so nice. I'll request if the, I mean, you know, two or three papers can be made out of them as a review papers and can be submitted to Aeronautical Society of India. Why I suggested because Aeronautical Society of India. Uh, yeah, they for yesterday they sent me a paper on 3D printing, and I rejected it because it was not even of preliminary nature. And while presentations made here of uh, of great uh, knowledge and information. Now, Colonel Sir, coming to y- your question, I feel that uh, there should be amalgamation of the conventional as well as the uh, you know additive manufacturing. Now, I am giving an example. See, I developed some uh, antennas. for uh, on, at uh, carbon for the space cars and it took me almost uh, one year to get them manufactured from government tool room using the cnc machine because there was some small error and it cannot be corrected in if i had it uh, i'm adity manufacturing there i would have done the same job in uh, 15 to 20 days and even errors could have been corrected so what i'm trying to say is that the advantage of 3d printing where we can do the corrections we can do the repair and uh, in my opinion except what uh, avm saxena said that you know making thousands of bullets and all those things but we are not going in those things for somewhere else you know aerospace suppose we make the um, satellites rockets etc we are not making thousands so additive manufacturing will be very good there particularly for nozzles tanks etc which came out in 
many presentations. Anil made a good presentation where all these things came out. Even Manjunath made a good presentation. And I also agree with uh, Dr. Chris Paul that uh, mass, uh, you know, it's a mass productionization. It's the era of that one. I want to tell two things, you know, which uh, did not come up very well. Dr. Uh, Sarup Chan brought out, uh, you know, about the 3D PCB, where antennas, even, the, uh, you know, semiconductor devices, all can be done in that one. So in that case, so total weight at 36 layers, 38 48 layers of PCB, etc. Those things can be done by 3D printing very easily. And those things we don't need in mass. I mean, if it's a mass production, it can be done. See, your mobile, which is uh, now weighing almost uh, 250 to 300 grams, will become a very, very flexible if the 3D printing is applied there. Last thing which I want to tell you, which I think most of the, uh, you know, I mean, it was referred, but it was not dealt in details. If we can have in 3D printing, see, use of graphene, carbon, and if nanotechnology is brought into it, that one, I feel that uh, the efficiency, both in, from mechanical point and if you are using the electronic or electrical circuits, will increase. Graphene putting with the nanomaterials of uh, like uh, gold or silver or copper will increase its conductivity. If the same thing is put with the for structural purposes and with the suitable uh, metal, then it will increase the structural strength also, which you talk about war page, etc. They will be quite less. So uh, I think that's another area where uh, experts in the additive manufacturing can look into it. And I feel there is a bright future in country itself. There is a knowledge existing from the presentation. It looks their persons are knowledgeable. They know what is should be done, and rest of course they will do it. You know. Uh, Dr. Saravai used to tell, he told me once when I protested, when I joined ISRO, that I am a solicited person, you asked me to work on antennas and communication. He says, see, if you work for one month, you will know the subject. If you work for six months, you will become an expert. So I am sure already experts are existing. If they work in all directions, we will be better than China because we always compare with China and definitely better than the US, etc. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. That was very interesting uh, thing that you, you brought out. So I'll, I'll, I'll go on to one slightly more uh, sort of debatable topic, which I thought should bring about uh, in the in the good minds that are here. Can I, can I interrupt for a small brain teaser session? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have been uh, discussing how do we infuse the capital into this particular business. And we can't be in uh, a you know, totally different approach the government is thinking. The three uh, milestones which the government has put in front of us is number one, education for all. So we can't have education without any input on the investment in the 3D printing itself. Second, they said health for all. There's so many schemes. So we have to think of where 3D printing can come in. Secondly, agriculture is a large employer in India, organized as well as unorganized. Can we think of what are the requirements of the agriculture industry? as far as 3D printing goes, tractor or any other farm machinery, I am yet to see anyone doing some parts for that. If we all come out with a small paper that yes, any company in India who is working in producing 3D printed parts for agriculture economy, they will get five years tax holiday. After all, the farmer is getting bijli free, pani free and everything else is free. If we also give him the 3D printed parts for his tractor repair, why not? So it's going to boost the farming economy. It's similarly, the Bijli for all. And uh, in uh, the Modi's uh, one phase, we said Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. While we are having now many villages in India which are totally defecation free, the many still areas, can we have the toilets made straight away out of 3D printing? I know one company in uh, outskirts of Delhi trying to build the entire ready-made toilet. Uh, today, nobody can do any uh, construction work unless the labor class which is working on the site is having a toilet facility. So you can imagine the kind of the income will get generated. So uh, secondly, with the building material itself and the solar panels on 3D printing. So you can have some part giving you tax freedom 
and then of course boosting the sector and dr uh, colonel kubeer of course i can call you dr kubeer the mod has issued the uh, positive list of 140 or whatever number can we compile a list along with dr shibuj and all of us put together in panel what are the key items which should not be imported by india where india has the capacity and then list out what all india can do we come out another list of the banned items or positive list where they will not be imported still there is a lobby which is importing some components of 3d printing and our indian uh, industries facing the music of you know duty waiver or whatever so over to you again doctor doc, i'll call you dr kubeer thank you very much i cannot be uh, equated amongst the intellectuals because i am a very simple soldier uh, and uh, i have only done electronic warfare all my life well anyway i'll, I'll get you back onto and because the point that has been brought out by my 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 senior and my mentor in fact uh, binkaman raman sapori is one of the first uh, people who ever came and you know educated me when i had just joined the ministry of defense as a director and in fact uh, through him we we learned a lot in terms of even you know the subject that i was dealing in which is offsets so i leave it there and then i'll come back here yes we should address those 101 108 items and we should try and bring out uh, but i want to get back to this uh, this point of aerospace and defense you see at the end of the day aerospace and defense is repetitive manufacturing and you know if there are uh, aircrafts that are to be uh, repeatedly made if we are talking about the amca if we are talking about the lca if we are talking about, we are talking about 83 aircrafts tomorrow we'll take we'll talk about 200 aircrafts tomorrow the, the, the day after we'll talk about 1000 tanks after that we are going to talk so we are talking in numbers we are talking about repetitive manufacturing we are talking about this so i will take you back to the fraunhofer institute of technology and uh, this is the fraunhofer institute of laser technology in germany where uh, you know the first uh, dmls um, uh, was actually sort of you know it came out as a research project and the process grew in application and the company was thereafter formed by dr dieter share and uh, matthias fokel who worked together in the ilt research uh, to develop the commercial technology that we are using today so this is uh, also uh, uh, referred as uh, slm selective laser melting and i think uh, you know by 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 you know it, it's a layer each layer of a part is created by aiming a laser at the at the powder bed and things like that anyway, i i leave it I, i leave that to you experts the question which i'm going to ask you is it is generally said that the parts are accurate they have excellent surface quality and uh, it's a near rot mechanical with near rot mechanical properties but however what he says is the process is ideal for printing precise um uh, high resolution parts with complex geometrics however when you come to numbers when you want to if you want to print a limited number of industrial items it's fine that that are otherwise difficult to do it's very fine because of the hollow spaces undercuts challenging angles and others but when you are thinking of larger volumes uh how does dmls or slm how does it uh, sort of merge into the whole thing because at the end of the day we have to when when we recommend somebody to set up a um uh, additive mint uh, additive printing uh, facility uh, ultimately it has to you know be profitable so uh, let us once again start with uh, dr chris paul and then i go to uh, dr sarup chand yeah uh thank you uh, panel kubeer see in this aspect we also pondered on a lot at rrcat see what happened when we developed these machines at rrcat with both the machines dd as well as slm one of the biggest challenges who will be the taker you know see you develop the machine you try to make the things so two things we are challenged with the two aspect number one what is the reliability of the you know what the good will we uh, you know bring to the market saying that the people say come and they are ready to buy and because it is a huge investment and second part is uh, whether machine can be put 24 into 7 on operation uh, if they want to go for it these are the two basic challenges that we were thinking of so what the model we are adopting now as 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 an institute uh, see uh, recently we, i told in my presentation also that we started an incubation center so what i am doing is i am going to bring my machine under incubation services 
And when I'm putting this scene into incubation services, see at that time when I put it into the incubation services, I'm not bothered too much about the money part, you know, because it's a government funded institute and what we are doing, we are giving opportunity to entrepreneurs to come use the machine and get these things fit into your frame. You know, um, that is the initial work we can think of. And, you know, uh, in some of the, you know, one of our applications, I just uh, bit uh, divert myself to other topic is like one of the thing is sterilization of medical component using electron beam. You know, that's what we are working on, right? In that case, other cat case come of the idea that for next two years, we are not going to charge any money from the medical device manufacturer. Simply they can come to work. We do free sterilization and these guys can go and pay the tax, whatever is it, that sort of thing are then. Similar line, I'm thinking, can I come a model where uh, we can give an opportunity to entrepreneurs to really gauge you are muted uh, whether things are fitted into the ecosystem or not and if things are uh, uh, once the entrepreneurs get the confidence they see the volume of the market and they understand the technology probably things can be done into the next front that's, that's the whole thing so what I'm telling you is we have to enlarge, we have to yep. get the uh, reputation in that. Second thing, we have to get the confidence in the market so that things can be taken to the next level. That's that's the... Thank you. Thank you. So before Sir, I... Supplementary, uh, question Dr. For, Dr. supplementary question for Dr. Kurt. Is there anybody working on fiber optic cables using the 3D printing? Uh, sir, uh, this fiber optic cable, you know, there are two part of, I'll say. One is when we talk of using into the high power lasers, right? Yes, that is a very, very challenging task because, you know, getting to that sort of quality, that is a very challenging. But for, you know, again, CGCRI is working on this part. But again, I'll say for the communication cable and other things, people are OK. But as far as making a high, um, high quality fiber in which high power can be transmitted, still is a subject of research in the country. And CGCRI is like doing. But again, I'll say still they are maybe 80 percent or 75 percent from the acceptable mark. So, so before I bring Dr. Sarup Chand, I think I'll get back to that question that uh, Wing Commander Ramon was asking you some time back about Airbus. And I want to quote this example and say, for instance, you know, Airbus uh, uses DMLS 3D printing technology to create uh, improved national hinge, hinge brackets fitted in the Airbus uh, 320. Uh, this, you know, has reduced the weight of the aircraft's part by 30 to 50 yeah. percent while keeping their strength and performance intact. The use of this technology has also reduced the weight of the aircraft by about 10 kilograms. I think mean, every kilogram matters when you're in the air. So, uh, Dr. Sarup Chand, back to you again. You should a little bit illustrate uh, your work with Airbus and tell us a little more about uh, DMLS and how we can probably, uh, you know, this seems to be the, uh, the, the, the lower end of the spectrum where we can quickly catch and, you know, proliferate it amongst the larger number of MSMEs. Uh, sir, uh, personally, I don't have much of an experience of working on DMLS directly. So I have only read about the DMLS so my knowledge in this area would be a little theoretical. But in terms of uh, the example which you talked about, the Airbus and the Boeing. So we do work with Boeing in India itself. And uh, we have done a couple of projects with Boeing uh, uh, using the metal as well as carbon composite. So using the carbon composite, we replace some of the parts which were being done so far in metal and replaced it with carbon composite, reinforced with carbon fiber. The second is, uh, the as I shared in my presentation, we do work with the Adam technology. And Adam technology is very good in terms of uh, flexibility, which you get in terms of metal change, which is to be done. And it gives precise parts which can directly be working on the system. So the example which you gave of the seat uh, fixing, there is another example of the belt, which is the belt buckle, which is about 600 buckles which go into the aircraft. And if we can reduce about 100 grams, that leads to 6 to 10 kg of the weight. And that is very easy to do 
and they have, we have done experiments on that where the buckle has been made with the uh, DFM technology and by doing it we were able to reduce the weight of the buckle which goes and without any structural uh, uh, strength being compromised uh, very very effectively and reduce the weight by nearly uh, uh, 300 grams so there are different uh, things uh, while you talked about the slm and the dmls since i don't have a hands on experience i cannot share that experience but using an adam technology i know that we have been able to achieve lot of things in the aerospace recently we developed for the indian air force itself lot of opening of the missile so when they do the selenium feeding in the missile the uh, pump which is used was imported and was made in uh, steel we converted that whole thing using a 17 by 4 because it's a non corrosive and a non pressure bearing pump and using that we were able to feed the selenium very easily in the missile firing i think dr sarup chand you are a little uh, biased towards the air force that i'm going to actually try to ask you to do something for the army but before no, that no, i want to ask you there are more examples of army sir yeah yeah okay good so but before that i wanted to ask you a very simple question uh, the, what are the volumes in terms of uh, business with boeing for this particular thing uh not very much sir, because they bought the machine subsequently so we is, didn't is it a, is, is it a, is it an offset project or uh, uh no 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 sir it was a uh, r&d project and okay. they took the machine purchased from us okay. after doing the initial project so they may be doing regularly the production because they keep buying lot of material okay and and that's what we should avoid we should actually keep the machine and keep giving them the products okay so i leave it there i want to ask you when you talk of 300 grams and when we talk of you know uh, uh, aerospace um 300 grams for a soldier when he carries it in high altitude is a great 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 savings and when you talk about this buckle and you know i'm i'm tempted to urge you to look into the uh, the uh, the uh, what do we call this uh, in infantry soldier as a system uh, i is it called insas i'm i'm yes. forgetting what it is f okay. f insas f insas infantry soldier as a system and therefore any little thing that you do over there is going to be a tremendous uh, uh, boost moral boost for the soldier because every gram that he carries because he's already carrying 23 24 kilograms on his uh, on on his shoulder at that at, at, in those altitudes and therefore i think let's let's look into it so sir, sir can i give you an example quickly please to permit me yeah yeah uh, we, have, we have worked on exoskeleton Uh, where okay. the weight can be transferred to the foot rather than being carried then we worked on the battery casing because the typically a soldier carries the battery on his uh, back and uh, that battery uh, is being mounted and uh, uh, using a casing which is very very heavy we were almost able to reduce about 1 kg of weight in the battery uh, system that's fantastic so in fact we should think of those things which you know a regular always carry uh, uh, sorry a soldier always carries like a rifle uh, got like a carbine like got those little things yeah yeah please yeah see this is uh, i'll just uh, quickly recap one of the brc technology called bhaba kavat you know which is recently brought in yeah so you know some things are already being tried in this direction definitely 3d printing is not into envoy and uh, things are changing you know because every uh, there are a lot of effort in this direction too no no i get you i i'm in fact i'm more concerned about dr sarup chand making this uh, d- difference because okay. every gram that reduces is what is more important for us so uh, before we conclude the session i think we have gone on pretty long i want to bring in the air vice marshal with a very uh, you know a simplistic uh, sort of a solution that he can give all of us um and i think uh, vinkaman raman sir what is your firm turf so it's all yours the question that i'm asking you here is i made an analysis in fact uh, my wife does this on on a daily basis she picks up uh, you know the the tenders that come out from all the brds and when i see the number of tenders that come out of brd in a month it is about 300 tenders from all all brds this is i'm talking about average 
and i was trying to put a figure on that because you know very i mean air force is so nice and so kind to the industry they don't even ask for a emd or you know so i can't even make an estimate of the uh, thing because if you ask for something emd then i know 2% 3% i can i can i can do a reverse calculation on the business now my question to you is here sir and these are to my understanding even if i take a very modest 1 crore per tender value business i am talking about 300 crores every month and uh, you know when i just you just have to do a small arithmetic and say 12 3 or 36 3600 to 4000 crores in a year which are only going in spares mig 29 spares some embrayer spares some this spares some this thing some numbers are limited so 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 would you give a guidance to the industry as to how 3d technology can be used to effectively service the indian air force your brds will be happy the industry will be happy we are talking about 4000 crores already hmm. very interesting sir you are to mute yeah. unmute yourself yeah. sorry unmuted you yeah, have very good point uh, colonel because uh, we all have faced this problem in fact i was mentioning towards that only when i spoke about mocus also because brds are our uh, factories you know they are uh, given the task of overall and repair of the uh, whole assemblies aircraft radars missiles and their uh, components also now we are uh, the all brds they do encourage visits from the industries they have got indigenization sections we call it isc indigenization substitution cells where they have ready list of items which they which they offer for indigenization and they can tell you about you know like any other military organization we also calculate provisioning for about 60 months hence from today so they can tell you even the requirements which will be there for next 5 years we have had uh, so many uh, all these uh, expositions def expos and uh, aero indias our brds do have a stall all brds will always have a stall and they will have their requirements they will all have their samples also and they will uh, be uh, they will be uh, telling what is the procedure to be followed to you know enter into this so there is a system and uh, we have a proper directorate of indigenization also at air headquarters which is uh, having the list of items which we require so this is how it can be done thank you uh, means, uh, thank you no, sir, ladies and gentlemen sorry, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Yeah, please sir please please all your red quarters has already issued a list of items which they need only through 3d printing uh, uh, that's so fantastic all across the thing you know uh, in fact earlier they were reluctant the issue was that dgaq is not qualified to do the certification or testing of these things so biggest hindrance is how do we educate and train the 3d people in the dgaqa or quality assurance institute suppose i got a mig 29 part or a mirage part or any other part so you produce it in a conventional way or you produce in the 3d printing way dgaqa will reject you he says no i can't qualify it in case tomorrow the part fails that i am going to be on the chopping block so we have to first educate the stakeholder of dgaqa so if we get this particular component in 3d printing he will know what to test otherwise uh, he won't even uh, be able to visit the factory and inspect it so what do i do he doesn't know anything about it so education as we said is the first starting point in itself and uh, i'm sure in the def expo in march we will have a stall on 3d printing itself where the directory of the indian vendors who are in the business will be circulated and uh, seattle boeing is looking after the supplier conference in april so whatever achievements or gains we get in march in uh, the def expo we'll pass on to the industry in 85 countries and we'll need your support from ernest chang also yes sir we are we are with you so uh, i think um, i think i just want to conclude at this point of time and say you know uh, the air vice marshal has told us air vice marshal saxena has told us about uh, how 
Air Force is aggressively pitching, and I can just second it because uh, this is one thing that we follow regularly on the on the net. And you know, uh, the Air Force website, uh, the Directorate of Indianization, the most friendly of all the three services. I used to say about the Navy like this when I was in the MOD. and uh, and and now i find the air force website is most friendly and but but however i must tell you as far as army is concerned the adb army design bureau is very very aggressive and they are doing a fantastic job down there and therefore today if i were to put all the three services together uh i mean I, i'm sure it will be a little more on that side but uh, 4000 crores into 3 we are talking about about 10000 to 12000 crores which will be only in spares and i think that's a very good business for the 3d printing industry we only need to talk in uh, we, we only need to figure out as to how we are going to certify our materials how we are going to get self certified how we will uh, will go on to the process certification how we are going to get ourselves aligned to the needs of the um, the defense forces and this is a fantastic opportunity as i see it and so just as a summation when i see since morning we have we have been talking about uh, the product development we have been talking about the uh, the astm ams the 3d alloys we are talking about uh, you know a, a number of um, metallurgy techniques we have been talking about the methodology of powder size flowability of powders we have been talking about the first article inspections and how these are done uh, in fact there was a very wonderful point that came out in um, um, dr anil kumar's thing in terms of the coe uh, a center of excellence uh, which they were thinking in terms of metal additive and i think uh, if i am not too wrong we come under raman sapore is a ardent uh, uh ardent advocate advocator of uh, uh center of excellences and i think we should now think in terms of a coe both in the up and the tamil nadu corridor mm, and 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 also you talked about uh, west bengal if they have taken a uh a, 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 a step ahead i think we should uh, push them a little more over there we should think in terms of the munitions india limited and go to pune and address a 3d over there we should think in terms of the others like kanpur and you know we should go to various places and find out as to how we should uh, should get this and proliferate this and and i think with the uh, you know we talked about in fact i was very happy when uh, we were discussing the young's modulus specific heat and uh, how 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 the entire 3d process and and, and i'm seeing dr surender pal's uh, turf over there and you know uh, it it has been uh, it, it's been an exciting uh, uh, day the the entire day uh, I, i think with this all that all that is left for me is to you know uh, okay we also talked about some materials like inconel 718 and the heat treatment and therefore i think two three major things come out one is center of excellence as a you know uh, to do and i think dr chris paul your 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 turf somewhere over there and wing uh, uh, commander sapori is uh, he is very very supportive of this center of excellence in fact he was been thinking about uh, for the cyber domain anyway i i'll not go there let's focus on the on the 3d now second is the entire research on on metallurgy uh strength of materials metals alloys and uh, uh how we can collaborate uh, and uh, coexist along with midani and other uh, other such you know uh players in this in this in this field a uh, third is in terms of proliferating the uh, 3d process itself like we talked about the uh, uh, D- dmls and uh, clm so how we should get this and how we should excite industry to come and fourth is in terms of getting the qualification certifications and uh, thing i think these are the four or five major things which have come out uh, i i with this i will get back to the session chair dr uh, vikram and sapori sir all yours thank you uh, sir uh, uh, it I, has I been please good your permission please sir please good please sir all yours see uh, well, i mean uh, colonel uh, colonel sir you are not brought out you know everybody was talking about the standards so testing and you talked about dgqa and semi lake etc i have got a suggestion that uh, one meeting can be arranged in formal way maybe by wing commander uh, raman and uh, maybe dr subhujon between semi lake dgqa and isro because isro you know we are more quality conscious i know it i mean uh, i had been in isro for 42 years so we are more quality but there the quality persons are also part of the development thing 
so how they qualify and you know anil never said that uh, i mean morning uh, this that we will go for this and other things so i think there can be a joint uh, conference or maybe uh, some sort of uh, brainstorming between dgqa semilac and isro as how to qualify these things because all these agencies will be using it so uh, standards can be evolved by us rather than looking into nasa standards or usa standards we have done it in space in the past thank you thanks for allowing me Sir, can, sir, can I just intervene here? Please, sir. Please. Uh, I am also the chairman of the BIS committee on standards. So, uh, uh, BIS has set up a fairly large committee only to look into the various standards and also look at the various standards which are available. So, I represent the country for standards in the ISO JEC committee. so uh, there are standards which are getting evolved around the 3d printing on how to do the qualification and how to create the standards around the 3d printing so if you do call a committee of this nature i would be more than happy to participate and share with you some of the experiences both in bis as well as in the iso committee which is the international committee thank you sir just to share with the audience that i was also representing a red quarter in the uh, subcommittee on directed of standardization the huge manuals would come to my table and i had no time to read them i'll just put them in the cupboard those days we did not have so much of uh, computing available i am not sure uh, whether the bis experience of dr sarup chand and the uh, mod's director of standardization can come together but as told by dr sindhir par also there is a need of putting all these people together and of course with the human resource we have had a excellent session since morning our uh, sincere thanks to dr shibu jan and his team and my personal thanks thanks to all the panelists here i am sure that this event would have continued if we were in a physical session in a hotel uh, but i have to now go for a wedding so i will have my cocktail there please raise a toast to your and your health i am sure the covid is going to be there so dr shibu john give us the name of the company which is printing the face mask on the 3d printing do you have any names yes oh, yes you yes, do have doctor doc oh. uh, uh, sarup ji will do it <laughs> okay great sir give us a free sample at least to all the panelists <laughs> now 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 that we have this face mask which is actually printed with antimicrobial material sir interestingly i know so you have I antimicrobial know. materials you can print it so you don't need to keep cleaning it it's that actually. is probably the best gift i should give it to the person where i'm going for party today <laughs> so that is the gift for the bride and bridegroom so i and sir very gift. soon and very soon sir uh, i thought uh, maybe we should be doing an event and what a good uh, opportunity in the defense expo we can have it a physical event maybe we should have a session only on 3d printing where yes, we can actually there. involve yeah we should we do that it. so i think something like a coordination that uh, colonel sir is also mentioned kubair uh, uh, sir kubair uh, sir that you mentioned we should have everybody coming together and also dr surinder sir also when uh, isro and all of the we, maybe we can actually have a, a conscious effort in terms of forming that formation there in the meeting itself if at all we can get everybody along i think it will be a great idea is there somebody printing a bitcoin in the 3d printing <laughs> <laughs> no bitcoin it's a huge is, business no no bitcoin is just like that government is talking of crypto itself, whether to be made legal or not legal i am sure some guys must be working and selling the bitcoins through 3d printing under the dark net also so next time when you have a coin you be sure whether it's printed by reserve bank india it's printed by 3d printing also <laughs> particularly the you know the uh, uh, counterfeit currencies probably the government will use 3d printing to make it more you know uh, worth it nobody yeah. can print the coins or notes so they will be embossing of 3d printing on the currency notes there was a time when uh, we had this problem of india importing paper from the same company which uh, our friend on the other side of the border was also using we never knew you uh, one day i had a yeah. currency withdrawn from the you know this uh, icici bank i withdrew from the atm and gave to deposit from a friend he says that this particular note is uh, fake i said it's from your own atm machine he said we don't know so they tore off so with that uh, small humor thank you very much and then uh, god bless and uh, enjoy yourself and 
please raise a toast to you and your family and thank to you, all the you, all the speakers you, and all the uh, audience thank you so much thank you, uh, we would like to have a follow up session through email each yeah. one of us and then uh, we'll get back to you soon thank you so much sure. thank you sir thank, thank, you. thank you all for this wonderful uh, time and your presence to shown here for this event i'm sure it was a great learning and we uh, have a wonderful weekend weekend is already started though uh, take care and have a good time sir thank you so much Bye -bye. thank you Bye -bye. thank you